Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation. We have x squared minus 4 on one side and square root of x plus 4 on the other side. We've done similar problems before and I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. And I'm also going to show you some graphs at the end. So for my first method, I would like to square both sides. My goal is to get rid of the radical and turn this into a quartic equation. So x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 16 equals x plus 4. And then x to the fourth. Now I can combine, like put everything together and get a quartic like this, but that's actually not what I want to do. I want x to the fourth on one side and everything else on the other side. And you'll see in a little bit why that's the case. Let's go ahead and do that. So I have x to the fourth by itself on the left hand side. Now my goal is to add something to both sides. And we used this technique before thanks to Nadia Fan again. I didn't know this method so thanks for teaching me that. But I want to turn the left hand side to a perfect square while turning the right hand side to also a perfect square. So my goal is to get perfect square equals another perfect square. So to do that, we can go ahead and do the following. Uh, subtract 2kx squared and then add k squared. So the left hand side now notice is x squared minus k quantity squared. Well, you could also add other things to make it a perfect square, but this works perfectly because it adds something to x squared, which we can kind of play with. So now we're going to be adding the same thing to both sides uh, on the right hand side. So it's going to be 8x squared plus x minus 12 and then subtract to a kx squared and then add k squared. So let's go ahead and rearrange the terms on the right hand side. That gives us these two things. 8 minus 2k is going to be the new coefficient of x squared. And then we have plus x. That doesn't change. And then negative 12 plus k squared. That's going to be our constant. Now, since the left hand side is a perfect square, we also want the right hand side to be a perfect square. And to get a perfect square, I want the discriminant of the quadratic on the right hand side to be zero. In other words, I want delta to equal zero. Make sense? Because if delta equals zero, then we have a perfect square. And we have a single solution, right? Now you can go ahead and set up an equation like this. Delta equals b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a times, that should be a k, not x, b squared minus 4ac, and then set it equal to 0, and from here you're going to get a cubic, right? But wait a minute. How do you make this a perfect square? The term in the middle should give us an idea, right? So I have x. So when I have x, it's usually like this. And if, her, if the first term is x squared, let's think about it. If I have start off with x squared, so here's the idea. If k squared minus 12 is rational, I'm hoping it is, then we could guess and check the solution like this. If I start with x squared and continue with x, the constant is supposed to be 1 over 4. And that comes from uh, the coefficient of x, half of that squared. In other words, this is x plus 1 half squared. Is that going to work? Yes. Because if you set this equal to 1 fourth and set it equal to 1, you're going to get the following. 8 minus 2k equals 1 gives you 2k equals 7, which means k equals 7 halves. And k equals 7 halves, if you plug it in here, you're going to get 49 over 4 minus 48 over 4, which is 1 fourth, because 48 over 4 is basically 12, right? So it works. Look at that. That's one fourth. So k equals seven halves is a rational solution. The other ones are irrational. Not good. Not good. So let's go ahead and go with k equals seven halves. What does that give me? That gives me the following. x squared minus k squared equals x plus one half squared. Wait a minute. I know the value of k, of course, that's seven halves. So let's go ahead and replace k with 7 halves, and we got ourselves something squared equals something else squared, which could be turned into a difference of two squares, but you don't need to. If a squared equals b squared, you have two solutions, a is b or a is negative b, right? So 
we can go ahead and write this as x squared minus 7 half equals x plus 1 half. And from here, we get the quadratic x squared minus x. You don't even have to multiply by 2 because you don't need to. And from here, we get two solutions, which is 1 plus minus square root of 17 over 2. Now, be careful because we did deal with a radical equation and we squared both sides. Uh-oh, that could bring in extraneous solutions. But we'll look at the graph and we're also going to check our work a little bit. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second scenario. It's going to be the opposite of this. Remember the negative b, right? And from here we get x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. And this equation also has real solutions, two of them. And we end up with four solutions. But do you think all four are going to satisfy the original equation? So let's leave it at that. You can go ahead and do the checking. But one of the things I would definitely look at would be, notice that we have x plus 4 inside the radical, right? So you want x plus 4 to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x must be greater than or equal to negative 4. That's one of the conditions. But not only that, we also want, obviously, the square root of something to be non-negative. Therefore, x squared minus 4 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And that implies x squared is greater than or equal to 4. You can kind of find the intersection, so on and so forth. But those are the stipulations that we have. Okay? Cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, shall we? And then we can kind of look at the graph and hopefully you can figure out the rest. Now, my second method is obviously going to be more elegant, in my opinion, but you get to decide. Now, we're going to go ahead and do this. Set this equal to y. Use a second variable. You can also use z if you like it better. But in this case, y would work. And from here, we get the following. I mean, this gives us x squared minus 4 equals y for sure, right? But let's go ahead and focus on this. Square both sides, x plus 4 equals y squared. And then subtract 4, and you'll get y squared minus 4 equals x. Bring it over here, and then you got a system, a good one. Uh, so we can go ahead and subtract these equations, negate, negate, and negate, and then add these two. 4 is going to cancel out x squared minus y squared equals y minus x. Let's go ahead and factor this as x plus y, x minus y, and this is just the opposite of x minus y with a negative 1. And then bring it over here with a plus 1, so now you can factor out x minus y. Can I skip that step, please? x plus y plus 1. Be careful. It's not minus 1 because it's going to be negated and 0. Yay! This is really cool, isn't it? Now from here we get two things. x minus y is equal to 0, which implies x equals y, or x plus y equals negative 1, or x plus y plus 1 equals 0, which is x plus y equals negative 1. Okay, let's go ahead and solve each one, but what is x, what does x equals y mean? It just means that y is equal to x squared minus 4, so we can go ahead and replace y with that, replace y with x squared minus 4, you got this equation, which is the same as before, you know the solutions, right? And this one also going to give you the same thing, x squared minus x plus 3, actually it's the other way around, I think, right? x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. And if you, let's just go ahead and cheat real quick. Yes, that's the other equation. And now when you solve this, you're going to end up with two solutions from each, but only some of them are going to work. Okay, let me go ahead and show you the graphs. This is from Desmos. As you can see, only two solutions, two intersection points, and another graph from Wolfram Alpha, which is kind of more compact. I like it. And here's the results. Yay. These are the ones that work only. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.